The development and the direction of Kenyan pop culture has been a subject of debate over the last six decades. Part of this debate has been whether Kenya has a distinct musical identity. While some believe that the country indeed has a national team, others argue that foreign music genres have eroded the local scene and denied Kenya the chance to develop its own. Edward Kabasa ventured out to speak to some of the key players in the music industry to find out how the last 60 years can be used to shape the future of the industry. The music development in this country has been very systematic, right from the 1946, uh, as somebody might have mentioned somewhere, um, with people like Fundi Konde, who came from the World War and then established the kind of music that was now known as pop music. But you also had people like uh, George Mukabe, uh, people like Dawudi Kabaka, people like Isaiah Muinamu. Uh, who really like uh, fixed what we now call as um, pop music in our country, in addition to the traditional music that has always been part of our lives. So our, our Swahili rumba is quite old. The only problem that uh, the youth or the, 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 the following generations did not take it to the next level, the way the Congolese took theirs. And that's why Congolese rumba or rumba Congolese became the dominant sound in terms of rumba. Benga sometimes has got its own blame, you know, it has refused to move with time. Like what has occurred elsewhere, in Nigeria just quickly we have Juju music translated into Afro, Afro beat and Afro beat now you've got the Bana boys doing whatever they're doing. But Benga is just there. When you listen to a band today, uh, in a nice club in Kisumu. It's like you've gone back to 1972. There is need for reconnection in the sense that our current generation should be taught the source of our identity in terms of music. Our traditional folk songs play that role very well. I'm personally running a project called Reconnection where I'm helping young composers to draw musical ideas from the folk songs, from the traditional music, and then repackage that for the current generation. As a nation, uh, our focus is working hard towards development and building up our nation. So um, those days are uh, the uh, youths maybe who are lazing around and all that. So it was basically a reminder for everybody working in any area. Uh, be it a student, be it a farmer, be it a what, to do something to wake up and really, really work hard. Kwa kweli music tumetoka mbali. Hiyo music wakati ilikuwa ni wazee rumba, wajua zamani wazee walikuwa nasema music sio kazi, lakini music sema kweli sasa imebadilika hapa kimekuwa music ni kama kazi. Na wakati huo recording ilikuwa mnakaa kwa studio karibu 3 months ndio mtoe record. 
mara nyingi tunaenda KBC tuna record life ndio zinatokea kwa kule kwa wananchi wana watch za kina uvivu wakati huo second generation ikafika sasa wakati wa first generation ilikuwa ni hiyo santuri hiyo wakati hiyo music ilikuwa santuri na ile gramophone sasa second generation ikafika ile tape wakati huo ndio ilikuwa recording unatoka tape na third generation sasa hii ni CD na USB sasa kidogo technology imebadilisha music imebadilika sasa ukilinganisha nae miziki ya zamani na ya kisasa hii unapata technology inafanya inakuwa rich na zamani ilikuwa unapata iko shallow us to be to, to be in existence for this period is that we have a very strong support system. When I say a strong support system, I refer to the managerial team all the way from the commanding officer up to the CBA. Tumeweza kuwapa motisha hata wanamuziki wengine pia ambao wameweza kujiunga katika vikundi na kuachilia muziki wengine wamejaribu kusimama peke yao kutunga nyimbo na zinafanya vizuri na pia tumeweza kuwapa motisha pia wenzetu wa nchi jirani wanajeshi kukuja na bandi zao na tunaona pia wakituiga waki vile sisi watu tunafanya John Katana, better known as the Bishop. Uh, it's been quite some journey, 50 years, five decades is quite long. It's been a good run. It's been a winding journey with a lot of experimentation. You see, when we started the band and when we recorded the first few songs, we had no identity, we were just experimenting. So we use a genre that is called pop, pop music from Europe and then we also tried some salsa but when we settled and said no 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 we have to have a distinct sound for our music and we started doing chakacha that's when we came up with songs like Akumu Nyakisumu, Unkulahu, Ndogo Ndogo, Nyambura those are all in the chakacha genre so we took a traditional or not really a traditional a beat from the coast and then fused it with other influences to make it popular across the country and beyond. Singuo, utaomba mtu, mtoto singuo, utaomba mtu baba. Kosa wako, kari atana. So I don't play that music in order to make young folks play old music, of course not. But it's to remind them there has to be that connection. Uh, generations have to connect. For a country to be successful tomorrow, uh, you really have to also um, look at what has occurred in the past. And indeed, that, that is what has made other societies very uh, successful by not forgetting their history. Yeah, that is the first Kikuyu beggar ever. And it was being backed by you. Somebody take and the rest will play the guitars. I've been to Nigeria and never heard of uh, Kenyan music being played there. Why should we keep on playing Nigerian music here? Why should we keep on playing South African here? 
If, it is, if you are doing it in your private capacity, I have no problem. But I don't want to go to the supermarket and I'm listening to Nigerian music. Why can't we have Kenyan music being played on the supermarkets? On the lifts? In the hotel lobbies? They should be Kenyan. Hey, 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 Kenya yetu, hakuna matawa.